I have a few guitar channels that I watch on YouTube. One of them is the Guitar Geek. I like him. I like him because he is just himself, and sometimes that is goofy, and sometimes it's funny. A few days ago, he did a video titled, I bought the cheapest Fender Stratocaster on Amazon. Link in the description. He goes over the guitar, not expecting a lot, but he was very surprised as to what he found. He takes it apart and does a high-level checkout of the guitar. He suggests in the video that with some upgrades and some tender loving care, you might be able to create a guitar for life. A forever guitar. I was sitting and watching this video a few days before July 4th in 2024 and thought it would be a cool project for the holiday, so I ordered one. I did not order the black model that he had in his video. I could see with the satin finish that his fingerprints were showing up very visibly. I ordered instead the two-tone triburst. It also comes in Dakota Red. The first observation I made of the guitar when I got it out of the box was the string height was way too high to really be playable for me. Next, I tried the tremolo and I couldn't get it to move. When I examined the bridge, it was flush with the face of the guitar and not floating. I suspected at the time that maybe the screws were uh, tightened all the way down for the bridge. Although when I looked at it closely, the screws seemed to be adjusted to a level that would allow movement. When I took the back off of the guitar, I found the springs to be probably the most rigid Stratocaster tremolo springs I've ever encountered. I could barely pull them so as to remove them off of the back of the block. Once I removed them, I was able to get movement in the bridge, so the screws were actually adjusted properly. After removing the pickguard, I cut the two leads going to the output jack and the ground going to the tremolo claw. The three pickups are as Amazon states. They are ceramic. The switch is of poor quality and so are the pots. The body is made of poplar and has a satin urethane finish. I find the body to be very serviceable and will make for a good modification platform. Here we start to get to the first area that is really important. The neck is maple with a satin finish and has a C-shape radius of 9.5 inches and the guitar has a scale length of 25.5 inches. The fretboard is made of laurel and very dry. There are 21 frets, and the bone is synthetic with a width of 1.650 inches. Well, pretty much all Stratocaster specifications here. The frets had zero fret rocking from the first fret to the 21st. Amazing and good to find. The sides of the frets could use some cleanup, but you'll not see any blood coming out of your hands while playing. The tuners are working, easy to tune, and the guitar stays mostly in tune. I will not upgrade them this go around. After conditioning the fretboard, I consider the neck to also be serviceable. So here's what we have. In the end, the neck is very playable and serviceable. That is a huge win for a guitar costing only $119. This makes for an excellent modification platform. For this upgrade session, I will strip out the original ceramic pickups and the electronics and replace them with quality parts. I decided to upgrade the pickguard with a aged pearl fender pickguard. For the electronic wiring harness, I start with three CTS split shaft 250k pots, an Oak Rigsby five-way pickup selector switch, 0.1 microfarad disc ceramic capacitor, and I decided to leave the output jack intact because I found it to be functional and I didn't think it really needed to be replaced. Next, for the pickups, I'm installing a set of Fender Ventura 60's Vintage Stratocaster pickup set for only $119, which I had to stop and look at the price of that because I found out to be hilarious that the pickups cost exactly what the guitar does. I built a standard Fender modern Stratocaster wiring circuit. I even used the printout that was in the pickup box from Fender as the guide. So here are some additional observations that I found while finishing up the setup of the guitar. The neck, it wasn't adjusted properly, and I needed to adjust the truss rod. I put lighter springs in the tremolo and spent about an hour adjusting the saddles and claw until I could get it just right. In the end, I could get a real stable medium to high string height that would intonate properly. The neck, knot, tuners, body, bridge, and output jack, in my opinion, are all adequate and serviceable. 
They should give any player years of play if taken care of properly. The original pickups were horrible and so were the electronics. With the replacements I installed, they should also last a lifetime of use in the guitar. The guitar on the bench today weighs 6 pounds and 14 ounces. It has good balance and the neck feels good to me to play. I'm very amazed as to how much guitar you get for $119. The total upgrades were another 200 I could see someone playing this guitar now for a very long time. I have squires in my collection that are 25 plus years old and all original and they're playing like their new guitar. People will say that squires and inexpensive guitars in general that are not made in the US are shit. Excuse my language. I will take any inexpensive guitar that gives me 25 plus years of playing enjoyment any day of the week.